Welcome to the Data Vault Builder presentation. How Data Vault Builder is running with Snowpark Container Services on top of Snowflake. Data Vault Builder is a business model driven data warehouse automation tool. So you create your business model in the tool in the same second we're creating database tables, load procedures and everything directly in Snowflake. After we've created a model, we can connect to many data sources. You can use Data Vault Builder staging connectors or built-in Snowflake connectors. It, everything works out in this process with a data viewer in the tool. You can then connect the data to your data model. We will create all the historization procedures, by temporal data loads, whatever you need. And at the end, we can create your interfaces and it doesn't matter if this should be dimensional, third normal form, flat tables or data products. If you're in the data mesh realm, everything is created automatically based on your visual selection. At the end, you can add as well business rules and there are much more things to the process, but that's not the main point today. The main thing is that we want to show you how to run all of this within a few minutes on Snowpark Container Services. So, the tool is covering everything from infrastructure development to operations and it contains modules to model within the tool, generate the code, deploy it between different environments, test your code, all the APIs for CICD and a scheduler and a master job creator and everything. But we will look today mainly on this infrastructure part because everything else is for all the data vault builder versions the same. So documentation will be created automatically, data lineage, we will see that in a minute, but we will concentrate now on to how to set up your infrastructure. And the main thing is that we want to create a really agile workflow for developing your analytics in an agile fashion. So what we need is something called distributed development. And this is what is really cool that Snowflake supports that, that you can create really your database sandboxes within a few minutes by cloning databases. We add now as well that the whole deployment on top of it is really agile. So you can work on different branches in different sandboxes. You can merge your development in your Git server together and deploy it to the production. But to do that, we need to have here this feature sandboxes and how to set them up in a very simple way. And the main thing we do is that we have a stateless service running as containers and communicating with the database. And these containers are connecting to the data sources, loading data, orchestrating stuff on top of Snowflake and talking to third party integrations. Now, on top of it, if we run it, on Snowpark Container Services, Snowflake will add us a security proxy, so it will uh, add TLS encryption and deliver then the web front end of the Data Vault Builder to your browser. Don't worry, all of that you don't need to understand because when we look on what we really need to do, it is very simple for you. So we have two tasks to do. One is usually done by more IT infrastructure role, but could be done as well by the data team if you have some more tech, tech savvy people in the team. One is to create a template database that has all the necessary structures that we will need to run the application. We deliver Python scripts to install them. You need to do this once. Then you upload our application into your Snowflake private network. You upload the software in one of your databases into a stage. Then you create a so-called access integration that's network settings and you start a compute pool. And compute pool is in fact a Kubernetes cluster that Snowflake is running for you. You just define on what is the sizing of it and it will start with a simple SQL command. So if this is set up and we will see later parts of it can be automated, then everything is in the control of the data team. And what they need to do is they need to do a zero copy clone of the template database to create their sandbox, or you even create a clone of your production database if you want to continue developing something on top of what is already in production, but you clone the database. The next thing is you start the service. And if you do that, you have the application ready. And I will show you 
this mainly second part because how to clone a database with zero copy cloning you probably have done enough times so let's concentrate on the second thing and let's see how long does it take to start a sandbox using snowpark container services and data vault builder so let's start our service and we see here the database was cloned i'm not showing this part in this video the second thing is we need to set some settings for this we provide function which will write down like who will be admin of this sandbox which kind of warehouse shall it use and what is my git repository next thing is i do i just check that somebody set up here a compute pool for me it's running it has the size that i want to do so i will like to use uh, i want to use this compute pool to run my service i looked that there are no services running so let's start our service and this service is using the configuration file which was created by this function so i don't need to configure anything more it will use some network settings that are prepared by my admins and now we can look if this worked and we see here that the service was prepared but it's still starting up so we could look here into the log files and we see here what the different log messages is what the different containers do and they will now start up the application this will take about one to two minutes to start up completely and in the meantime we can have a look here at the endpoints and now snowflake is commissioning for us provisioning a internet ready access point that we can access to log in it's as well providing here a proxy server that will do all the authentication stuff so we will have single sign on and this is probably the part that takes longest to start up because if you look here in our log file then we see here that the start of the server already did work so it's running we just need to wait until we get a url to connect to it in the meantime we can go back to the slide for one minute and what is the relevant part here is yes you have a part here that is done by your maybe infrastructure team prepared stuff uploaded stuff maybe they do virus scanning on the software that's perfectly fine but as soon as everything is ready everything is in your hands of the data team so you can clone the database start the service and you're ready to go so let's return here to the browser and we're showing this here in real time and here it is so we take this url we go in here and start the connection to this sandbox we see here now the security proxies provided by snowflake we have https so you don't need to generate any certificates you don't need to look up how to secure your internet access that's done by snowflake they pass the single sign on to our application and without configuring anything like passwords or users in the application i'm already logged in and this is an empty sandbox and that's not really fun we want to see that some stuff is working here so let's do that and let's compare our local sandbox running on snowflake against our git repository it will show me all the differences that we have and i want to select that i want to deploy everything and now it will install my data model which is in the git server directly onto my local sandbox and we see that the objects are appearing here so if we go back as well to the database and i will switch here to a role called data vault builder we will see the tables directly being created in the database we're using so in the moment the data model is loaded here everything in the database is happening as well and slowly this here is evolving it's importing all the bits it's importing as well low definition staging uh, source systems staging tables and everything so if we go here already in the staging area we see that here different source systems were loaded staging tables were defined in the data vault if we go in here we have a data model that is already 
connected to at least two different data sources and this data model is a little bit bigger than what we have here but i'm showing you only this small bit now as well in the interface section already some interfaces were imported from the git repository and we have probably some business rules here that's perfectly fine data lineage was already created and documentation can be generated now now it goes really to the database looks what is there writes the documentation based on what it sees in the database not what should be there and it's production ready so if we go to the job section let's go to the flights area let's start loading it will connect to the source system load the data into our staging table so we have the source system here flights we have the staging tables as soon as the staging tables are loaded it will start loading the core raw vault and progress with the data and here this is running in parallel we're using a connection pool for parallelizing all the loads we can here as well have another source system that is connecting to the data and this is loading the data already here into our hubs so the data is loaded we can look into the satellites including historization that was loaded already as well we could go to the data viewer let's have a look onto our data This is one that I didn't load it, so you see it's a real world scenario, but we can go here, look at the carrier, look at the value distribution. That's everything working just after this short setup time. And this means that we can go as well now to our dimension model and check which kind of data output is prepared here. And we could go change the business rules and we can go and publish now our first interface on our sandbox. Now, this is the point we're now on my sandbox. We have loaded everything. I have set up everything. And now I could go and develop my feature. And when I'm finished, I will use the deployment module again to commit my changes back to Git. So let's add here a new hub. And we'll use here some snow parks, why ever. But this new element is now created in my model. Let's say this was my feature that I wanted to develop. I compare now my local environment against my Git. And as I started from this Git branch, it will show me exactly what I have done. What are the changes that I implemented here? So I did a change here to a business rule as I published it. And I have created here a new element. I decided I want to bring both of these elements. No, I don't want to bring this in, to my Git and that's it so this is the development workflow from setting up a sandbox loading a data model from git doing a change and committing it back into a git repository